the idea that we do something to somebody to change them, uh, which I think is probably the deepest misunderstanding in the whole of medicine, because I don't think we can do anything to change anyone. <laughs> uh, I think people can change themselves, and you can be some support to them in doing that. And a person has a new heart and lungs, they still have to take over their own health, or they're going to stay an invalid and, and, and die, and a lot actually do. So, in the end of all, even in medicine, it's our own healing power that is, is actually the center of things. Some interventions can help towards that. And it's interesting at the moment, while psychiatry is relentlessly refusing to change, they're still pursuing this idea, we want to be real doctors that will be accepted by the, the medical doctors. And of course, they're only laughed at. And if they get a psychiatric unit in the general hospital, it's usually down the end of a corridor. And people do this when they see them. So uh, <coughs> it do, they, you know, they don't really get accepted. But that's what they're pursuing. Now, the medicine they want to be accepted by is 19th century medicine. But it's interesting to say that psychiatrists are wanting to be 19th century doctors attacking, and they've tried every kind of bacterial theory and treatments. Uh, whereas they say medicine moving quite rapidly, and the lay public out there are moving ahead again. There's more, if you read any woman's magazine, and women have been pivotal in this, it's all about maintaining your health. Now, you know, jogging, all these peculiar things that people do. I couldn't run 100 hours, but anyway. Freud, when he, he only was only four or five months over with Charcot, but it influenced him greatly, and he got this idea about Trump. But when he came back, Joseph Breuer, who was much older, teamed up with him, and he had a very clear idea about trauma. So between the two of them, they not only brought out the fact that when we've been traumatized, it can have a long-term effect. And uh, they, they, in the, I don't know if you've read those early papers from that time, but, and of the course, the, the, the title for illness at that time of what we now call neurosis was hysteria. But they said, and this is what interests me so much, hysterics suffer mainly from reminiscences found to be astonishingly intact to possess a remarkable sensory force, and when they returned, they acted with all the effective strength of new experience. That's exactly what I found. It was one of the things that, as I say, changed my whole direction, because when I went to Joshua Beer in 1959, he had set up the first proper day hospital in the world. He'd also created a, a genuine therapeutic community, and his aim in life was to, to get rid of mental hospitals. So he, he had an enormous influence on me personally. But uh, the other thing that great point that Freud made at that time was the last sentence, recollection without affect almost invariably produces no result. In other words, this is, a lot of people have an intellectual memory, say, of their brother or parent or whoever having died. When they move into the experience of the death that they haven't yet experienced, it's a completely different thing. And when they hit that feeling, that's when you see that change. So, it's, it's a very crucial point, and Freud pinpointed this. So it seemed to me that he made an amazing breakthrough. Yeah. I don't know if you know the three or four proofs that Jesus Christ was really Irish, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you no? Know? Well, first of all, he was 30. He was hanging around with the boys. He wasn't there. <laughs> he was worried they'd run out of drink. <laughs> and he thought his mother was a virgin, and she thought he was God. He had to be Irish. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean... Uh, it's a stereotype, but it's also sadly very true because <laughs> boys brought up like that become very inadequate husbands. Mm -hmm. So mothers then focus on their male offspring, or one of them. And of course, they turn out to be inadequate husbands in turn. Talked about different types of personality at four major types. The, the ones that's a, a simplified way I would think, it to me, most useful is the notion of introversion and extroversion. Uh, because this is one of, the, one of the big difficulties with psychiatry. As soon as you mention any kind of characteristic, like being rather introverted, 
it's immediately pathologized over to become Asperger syndrome. Now they've done away with Asperger syndrome to the consternation of the Asperger society. <laughs> 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 this only just shows the nonsense that goes on. That's, that's one of the reasons I think psychiatrists invented all these mythical illnesses like schizophrenia and, and this awful thing of bipolar. Even in the psychiatric literature, what was called manic depression was considered and it was quite rare. And what generally, if you waited long, it had a fairly good outcome. Now every second person that comes to me is bipolar. And it's very clearly created by the drugs. And I was wondering, how did, it, how did it kind of catch on? I found then a fellow called Bieberman in the States made this his vocation. He's since, I don't know if he's in jail, but he certainly was, was brought to book because he was taking money from pharmaceutical companies and everything. But he let the cat out of the bag, and now everyone has been diagnosed as bipolar, clearly produced by the antidepressants mainly. And he, he was insistent on the whole thing of a person realizing and doing the work. And that was, those are the things I learned that have just been the rest of my life. I wasted too much. And I was saying there he was able to break through into the, through the glass wall. So I saw all of these things happening and it was a great experience. This is one of the things he said, I believe there's no cure without change. There's no change without incentive. There's no incentive without meaning. The new meaning of life has to be experienced and there's no experience unless patients are helped into a position where they can do things for themselves and carry the responsibility for their own mistakes. That really hits the centre as far as I'm concerned. <coughs> so I don't need to really say that much more. That's just a summary slide of trying to say what I felt were, were the main contributions of the three boys. Uh, and if we could now, as some people are beginning to use all of those yeah, insights, yeah. I think then we'd be somewhere nearer to finding out what psychotherapy is. And the change has been for me has been coming more and more of relating heart to heart rather than to brain. It seems to me that the West is intoxicated with brain activity. And in fact, even science is starting to show now that the heart is our real center. And there are more messages going from the heart to the brain and the two work together than the brain to the heart. There's something like 40,000 neurons in the heart. It has its own mini brain. It's also more gentle, but more powerful than the brain. If you want to measure the brain, you have to put electrodes right on here. If you want to measure the heart, you can actually measure it outside the body altogether. Or, you know, we even do a cardiograph. So, <coughs> and therefore, the more you can move, it seems to me, in that direction, the more therapy seems to happen automatically. You find that you're less involved, and and the person is very clearly doing the work, but they can't do it on their own. And, and that seems to me to be central to therapy because they're so full of defences and resistances. And therefore, a big job of the therapist, I think, is to create uh, an aura of safety. Whatever that source is, is pure love, but it's also active. So it's coming into this planet all the time. Uh, but if our hearts are closed, we, we can't pick it up. It's like having, not having the right, you know, at the moment there are se probably several million messages going through this room. If you have the right mm -hmm. iPhone, you can pick one up. And in the same way, I think our hearts can pick up the energy, the most subtle energy, if our heart opens. And that's the only purpose of meditation. I think therefore society is the main part is going towards more degradation. But then there's an increasing stream of people who are saying, I don't want to be part of this anymore, and starting to grow vegetables. And some of them are physicists going out growing their vegetables. And I have to make my bread this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Thank you. Thank you.